Okay, welcome back, Raft Guide trainees. This video is focused on what happens after training. Uh, okay, I've just I've just completed two weeks of training with Sage, and now they've offered me a job. What happens? First thing is you got to complete all the employee paperwork, and it's a pain, but that's what you got to do to work in the United States. So, it takes a little while. You have to pass a pre-employment drug screen and uh, we'll get all that going and out of the way. Now, all at the same time, what happens is you're also putting in an order for your own personal river gear. Uh, we have pro deals with lots of great manufacturers, Immersion Research, whoa, Immersion Research being one of them. Uh, a lot of people just kinda get everything they need off the NRS website. That's uh, nrs.com, you can even start looking at it now usually we're getting about 30 to 40 percent off of whatever prices you're seeing on the website um, as, a, as a, a commercial guide here. So it's a great program. Those guys are awesome. And so you're doing that. Uh, part of, So you can't check out um, and become a commercial guide until you have all your own personal river gear. So that, that's always some confusion there um, for new guides. But like, yes, you... You cannot request to do your checkout run until you have all of your all of your gear, and we'll send out a list of what that that list of gear needs to be. Um, so now you've passed your pre-employment test, you've got all your paperwork in, you're eligible to work in the U.S., you've got all your gear, and what's been happening during all this process is you've been continuing to get out on the water. So once official raft guide training is over, you need to be coming into the boathouse every day figuring out where boats are going on the water and following along and tagging along. We call it turkey boating. And so what happens is you and a bunch of your fellow trainees that have just graduated the class and have gotten hired, you're all still around and you're coordinating with each other and you're all saying, hey, you know, there's two trips going out on the Lower Eagle today. Let's take a boat and follow the trips. You know, that's the kind of stuff we want to see you doing because it's just more hours and more time. What happens is when training ends, the rivers really start to spike as far as water levels go. So it starts to warm up, the snow starts to melt faster, and the river levels that you see during training are going to be much lower than what they're going to do in the first couple of weeks of June. So what we're wanting to see is you guys coming in every day and getting out on the water, watching the rivers rise, getting used to the runs, and basically getting ready to be that commercial guide. I've never seen anyone come out of a two-week training course and the next day be ready to check out. It's never happened, okay? You have to come in and be prepared to put in more time. Uh, and that's why Joe, Joe and Jason have been telling you guys, like, look, you're, it's like a month of training, and you're not on the payroll for any of that, you know? Um, you're not on the payroll until you've checked out and you're a commercial raft guide. Most people check out, like... 10 days to two weeks after official training is over. So, you know, you're going to train for two weeks, then you got two more weeks of putting in the time. Um, so just expect that. Now, all of you new guides have to check out on the Upper Colorado first. That's our most popular trip. It's class two. It's where all the families go. It's awesome. It's honestly like some of the senior guides, including myself here, we love going and guiding on the Upper Colorado because it's just, you know you're going to have a good day on the river because you don't have the stress of huge whitewater, right? You can just go enjoy the river, enjoy the views, and enjoy your customers and just relax. So it's a great place to be. It's where you're going to build your base as a commercial guide. And then as your skills improve, you're going to check out on other runs. So everyone's going to check out on the Upper Colorado first. Then if you're feeling good on class three stretches, like perhaps the Lower Eagle or Gore Creek or something like that, you'll come to us and say, hey, I've, I've been practicing a whole bunch out on this run. I'm ready to go. We will then say, yeah, you know what? You're right. You have been being out there. I've been watching you in the turkey boat. You've been having good lines. Sure. Let's check you out on class three. Or we might see, or we might say, uh, I, you haven't seen the Lower Eagle in a week. You know, the water level's doubled since you've seen it. It doesn't even look like the same river. No, you are not ready to check out. So it's always going to be a call by senior staff and management of whether you really are ready to go or not. Because to give you a checkout run, we're giving you paying customers. You are going to be in your raft doing the entire trip as the guide. There just happens to be a senior guide next to you in your raft to basically grade you and to catch you if you like legitimately screw up and they would take over the guiding at that point and you would fail at that point so 
That's how the checkout run works. It's a serious deal. You have to be ready. We have to be confident that you're ready as well. And keep in mind that your senior guides that are doing the checkout runs for you, um, you know, that's a lot of checkout runs that they got to ride along and, and do with you rather than just guide the boat themselves and make the tip themselves. So your senior staff is giving up money to get you in, in the payroll and get working. And they're totally into doing that. I'm not trying to put a guilt trip on anybody, but you know, that's part of their job and, um, they know that, but there comes a point when it's like, if you fail to check out run like two or three times, everybody, including myself is going to be like, dude, I, I don't have any more time to give you more checkout runs. Like, you know, either do it or don't. <laughs> and that's, you're going to hear that a lot in training is like, look, as a raft guide, you got to make a decision and you either do it or you don't. It's not like a, oh, I got an 80%. I passed the test. No, it's either you pass or you fail. That's it. There's nothing in between. So um, we've always preached at Sage that you get two checkout runs and that's it. If you don't pass in two, then you're just not going to be a raft guide. And that may sound harsh. That's hardly ever happened. Like maybe once or twice in 10 years. So don't let it scare you. But all I'm trying to do is relay the message that you got to be ready for a checkout run when you ask for a checkout run. Okay. Um, okay. Now you've passed your checkout. You're now on the payroll. Um, now you're in the rotation to start getting trips. Now keep in mind that because it's going to be a huge water year, there are many factors outside of just your shifts that are going into scheduling guides. And with a high water year, we need a lot of really good guides out on the water. And um, even if you've passed a checkout run, sometimes you're not going to be on the water the very next day, right? It just depends on where your skills are at, where the water levels are at, and how busy we're at, we are. Now, I'm going to touch on that real quick. This video is getting long, so I'm going to cut it short here. But scheduling, you've, you've passed your checkout, you've done everything, you're on the, you're on the schedule. We don't know when we're going to be busy. We literally could have 100 people tomorrow, and the next day we could have 10 people, okay? We are 100% at the whim of when people call us and want to go rafting. We never know when that's going to be. In fact, just so you know, most of our bookings, over 50%, probably 60 70% of our bookings come within 24, 12 hours, 12 to 24 hours of the activity. So, for example, a Lower Eagle afternoon trip, it starts at 2 p.m., that may have 10 people on it in the morning when you go out for a morning trip. Say at 8 o'clock, it has 10 people on it. By the time you're done with your morning trip and you check back in at the office, that 10 people has gone to 60, okay? So that's six or seven more guides that we need in a matter of, you know, two, three hours of booking. So that's how last minute people are booking their adventures nowadays because of mobile devices and online bookings. And people don't plan. They just look at the weather and they're like, let's go rafting today. We're ready to take them when they want to go. So that's just something to be aware of in the scheduling is basically you will have days off during the summer, but you're just never going to know when they are. Uh, it just ha You will happen to have a day off when we happen to be slow. If we're busy, you're working. Okay, so, um, you know, planned vacations, not going to happen. You know, extended two weeks in Denver to go to Red Rocks to some concert, not going to happen. You part of your commitment to taking our training and to being an employee at Sage for this summer is that you are available every day from May 15th when you start training until late August. That's kind of the deal. Like I said, you will have days off. You'll probably have multiple days off in a row sometimes. But yeah, uh, you just don't know where they're going to be. So that's kind of the deal. And um, anyway, I'll, I'll end this video here and we'll get you another one as thoughts come along. Okay, thanks. Bye.